trigonometric function values. In this section, we will cover two very important ideas. So we are taking three functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, tangent. And for all students take calculus, in the first quadrant, all will be positive, meaning is sine positive, tan positive, cosine positive. And then in the second quadrant, sine will be positive, tangent and cosine will be negative. In the third quadrant, tangent will be positive, sine and cosine will be negative. And then in the fourth quadrant, cosine will be positive, so sine and tangent will be negative. So let's see what happens. If we take a right triangle, then H is the hypotenuse, A is adjacent and O is the opposite with respect to this angle X. So when I'm writing, say, sine X, what will happen? Then I'm writing cosine X, then tangent X. So S for sine, so sine X will be opposite over hypotenuse. So then we write O over H. And then cosine x, so AH, we are writing A over H. This is by definition. And tangent x will be OA. And this one you can easily see that it is, I can write like this. This is absolutely okay. Because if you divide O by H and A by H, algebraically it is okay. So then what is O over H? Sine X. So then we write that. So we are saying it is sine X and then A over H will be cosine X. So we have learned that tangent X is another measure which is the ratio of sine X and cosine X with the same interior angle. So in this case we are considering X as an acute angle and later you will see this one will be considered as reference angle. And those reference angles will be in a standard form like 0, 30, 60, 45. And we'll take also 90 because we have seen this value in the table. So if you know sine x cosine x, easily you can find tangent x. And what does this all students take calculus mean further? So if I am in this quadrant, then my sine and cosine both will be negative. If I'm here, then other than cosine, like tangent and sine will be negative. In this quadrant, all will be positive. We have mentioned already that. Now we can see one important result quickly from this right triangle. Everybody knows that hypotenuse square will be equals adjacent squared, opposite squared. So this is known as the Pythagorean. So then if you replace some value from here like look at I have h squared over h squared equals a squared over h squared plus o squared over h squared so this one is 1 we are dividing each term of this by h squared so a squared over h squared will be from here which is cosine squared x plus O square over H square will be sine squared X. So this one is known as trig identity. It's true for all X. For all X values, they, these are angle in here. Suppose I'm taking in this quadrant, the line, this one is the terminal side and this is initial side. So it is forming angle X. Now, when I said negative x, we know that it goes here. It goes here. This is negative x. Now, what will happen to sine negative x? Now, you know sine in the fourth quadrant is negative. So, this one will be just negative sine x. Cosine x in this quadrant is positive. So, you can just say it is cosine x. And then tangent will be also here negative. So if it's a negative tangent x. So what is the use of this one? When I say sine of negative pi by 3 equals what? 
you will say that this is negative sine pi by 3. So pi by 3 is 60 degree. So sine 60 degree we know it is radical 3 over 2. So you get square root of 3 over 2. So we have also learned in algebra that if I have a function when my input just changes with a negative sign and we get the function back with negative outside then this function is called odd function. So then we can say that tangent and sine these two functions are called odd functions. So later when you will see the graph of tangent and sine function this function will pass through the origin and it will have origin symmetry. And cosine of negative x is cosine x, then this one is even function. So the even function has y axis symmetry. We'll see later in the graph of those functions. Now we'll be talking about another representation. You will see some questions that are asking pt is same as x comma y and again if you consider some angle here is t then our x coordinate this is x axis this is y axis so then this x coordinate will be just cosine t and y coordinate will be sine t and we have seen that if you have any angle known then sine square t plus cosine square t will be 1 because this is at the unit circle the radius is 1. Now we take one example say that t equals pi by 6 so what is pt? So you know that pt is just cosine t sine t now when I replace cosine t by pi by 6 so we know that cosine pi by 6 is radical 3 over 2 and sine pi by 6 is 1 half and then you already know this one from the unit circle that pi by 6 is actually 30 degree angle radical 3 over 2 and 1 half that means sine 30 is 1 half and cosine 30 is radical 3 over 2 so now what is interesting on this if you just square these and these and add together you will get 1 so that means any points I have on the unit circle when you square and add them it will follow the Pythagorean that is very important one more information say I have t equals pi plus pi by 3 which is actually 4 pi by 3 you know that so then our x will be cosine pi plus pi by 3 now what happens in this case pi is here pi by 3 is here and we know that this value here and this value here are very much same only thing the sign will have changed so in this case what we see when I have the angle 4 pi by 3 I'm actually in third quadrant so in the third quadrant cosine is negative so you can ignore this one just say it is cosine pi by 3 with a negative sign and cosine pi by 3 is 60 degree right so then cosine 60 is 1 half so this one will be 1 half now when you say y which is sine pi plus pi by 3 you just need to understand the quadrant we are in third quadrant so sine also will be negative and it will go only with the reference angle we have seen in the first quadrant you can ignore this one even if I have any multiple of these we can ignore it just to identify where we are and then put positive or negative using those reference angles. We'll talk about that detail in the next section. So what we get actually here. So sine pi by 3 which is 
um, 60 degree, so it will be radical 3 over 2 for sine. So then we got our PT, or you can say P4 pi by 3 is negative half comma radical 3 over 2. Let us practice another problem. So that I'm looking for cosine negative t negative pi, what it is. So this one, you can say that cosine, I can factor out a negative sign, then I get pi plus t. Now we know cosine negative x, this one called x. Cosine negative x is just cosine x because it is even function. This restriction is not needed though, but in this case I'm just showing you what happens. As we said that you can ignore this one here. If you consider that one like less than pi by 2 greater than 0, so then pi plus t will bring you here. So that means in this your um, cosine will be negative and then you can say that this is negative cosine t.